If you've been looking into peptides like CJC1295 and ipomorelin, you've probably heard people say that they can help with recovery, fat loss, and even better sleep. I've taken this blend myself, I've had clients on it, and today I'm going to break it all down for you. What these drugs actually are, how they work, what the science says, and what kind of results you can realistically expect. And real quick before we go any further, this is not medical advice. I always recommend you talk to a licensed physician before you take anything like this. CJC1295 is a lab-made version of a hormone your brain already produces called GHRH, or growth hormone releasing hormone. Think of GHRH as the brain's switch for telling your body to release growth hormone. CJC1295 mimics that switch. Now, there are two versions of CJC1295, with DAC and without DAC. DAC stands for Drug Affinity Complex. With DAC, the peptide binds to proteins in your blood and lasts for about a week. And what that means for you is you can inject less often, usually once or twice a week, and your growth hormone will stay elevated in the background. Without DAC, the peptide clears much faster, usually within minutes. So you'd need multiple injections per day to keep growth hormone pulses going. CJC1295 without DAC gives you tighter control. It's for people who want sharper, more natural looking pulses instead of a steady baseline. Some doctors and athletes prefer this because it mimics the body's rhythm more closely, but it takes more discipline to stick to the dosing. On the other hand, CJC1295 with DAC is all about convenience. You inject far less often and your baseline stays elevated for days. In simple terms, with DAC is like a slow release capsule. It's good if you want convenience and fewer injections. And no DAC is like a quick release pill. It's good if you want more natural pulses and you're willing to inject more often. Now, ipomorelin works differently. It's binding to receptors for a hormone called ghrelin in your pituitary gland. And when that happens, it signals your body to release growth hormone in short, natural bursts. Now, here's why that matters. There are older peptides in this family like GHRP2 and GHRP6 which also worked on ghrelin receptors, but they came with baggage. They spiked your cortisol, which is your stress hormone, and prolactin, which can cause unwanted side effects like low libido or breast tissue changes in men. Those drugs also made people ravenously hungry, which is not what you really want if your goal is fat loss. But ipomorelin is different. It's selective, and that means it stimulates growth hormone release without significantly affecting cortisol, prolactin, or your appetite. So you get the growth hormone pulse without all the messy hormonal side effects. And this is exactly why ipomorelin has kind of become the go-to when it comes to stacking these types of peptides. On its own, it's providing quick, clean pulses of growth hormone production. But when you combine it with something like CJC1295, it amplifies that baseline signal and makes this whole system work much more like it did when you were younger. Think of CJC1295 as setting the volume and ipomorelin as adding the rhythm. Together, you get a pattern that looks a lot like your natural growth hormone release when you were in your 20s. So let me get a little bit more specific on how it works under the surface. Growth hormone itself doesn't actually build muscle directly. What it does is signal your liver to produce something called IGF-1, or insulin-like growth factor 1. IGF-1 is the molecule that drives recovery, muscle repair, collagen growth, and fat mobilization. So think of it like this. Growth hormone is the coach shouting instructions from the sideline, and IGF is the actual players out on the field executing the plays. So when you raise your growth hormone with CJC and ipomorelin, what you're really doing is raising IGF-1 passively, and that's what creates the changes you feel. Now, the important part to understand is that growth hormone isn't supposed to just be flat all the time. Your body naturally pulses it, and those spikes usually come at night during sleep or after hard training sessions, basically when your body's recovering or it needs the most. And that's exactly when the IGF-1 gets activated and does its best work, repairing muscle tissue, burning fat, and helping you recover. If you just raise growth hormone in a flat line, like with injections, you lose those natural rhythms, and that can blunt some of the benefits and even increase the side effects. 
CJC provides that steady baseline increase and ipamorelin is what's really giving you the pulses. And together they create a more natural pattern that lines up when your body's supposed to be using growth hormone in the first place. So I'm sure you're probably wondering, why don't I just take the growth hormone directly? The problem is that growth hormone injections are going to spot increase your growth hormone. And if you're not disciplined with the amount and the times that you're putting into your body, you can create more problems than you create solutions for yourself. That's not how your body naturally works. And doing that comes with more risk. Insulin resistance, water retention, carpal tunnel. CJC and ipamorelin, on the other hand, they're mimicking that natural pulse pattern that we talked about. And this is just safer and a much better long-term solution if this is something you're trying to take. But either way, the key thing to remember is these drugs, regardless of whether you go with the IGF, growth hormone, or the CJC ipamorelin blend, they're not going to serve as a replacement for something like testosterone replacement therapy or anabolic steroids if your goal is to build muscle. So if you're expecting that steroid level muscle growth by adding these peptides to your regimen, you're probably going to be disappointed. Now, a quick note on where ipamorelin fits. There are other peptides in this family like sermorelin and tesamorelin. Sermorelin is a much older and shorter acting version. And tesamorelin has been used specifically for visceral fat loss in HIV patients. But ipamorelin is generally considered the cleanest and the most effective of the three, which is why it's usually the go-to when people add it to CJC. Now, I'll break sermorelin and tesamorelin down in future videos, but just know ipamorelin is the one most people stick with, especially for stacking. Now, here's what you can usually expect if you run the CJC 1295 and ipamorelin together. Now, the first thing people notice is sleep. Within the first week or two, you're experiencing deeper sleep, waking up more rested, and that's pretty big because that deep sleep is when your body naturally pumps out the most growth hormone, and that's when you're recovering from your training. And that leads into the next thing that you can typically expect, which is a significant improvement in your recovery. Usually about two to four weeks in, you're less sore, you can train harder, and you typically don't feel yourself dragging throughout the day. Now, the fat loss comes a little bit later. Around the 8 to 12 week mark, you're probably going to notice that you're leaning out more efficiently. But keep in mind, this isn't magic. You still need diet and training dialed in. But these peptides can definitely help your body burn fat more effectively if you have those other things on point. And the last benefit is collagen and joint health. And that's really the longer play that you're probably not going to experience for months three to six. But when you do, you'll notice a significant improvement in how your skin, tendons, and joints feel on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is huge for guys who are over 40, especially the ones with knee, hip, and lower back pain. So the order kind of looks like this. Better sleep first, faster recovery next, fat loss after a couple months, and then connective tissue benefits if you stay consistent. Now, from my own experience, I ran this blend for about three months, and the biggest thing that I noticed personally was the clear improvement in the quality of my sleep. The muscle and strength gains for me were kind of negligible, but keep in mind that I'm already on TRT, and I'm not natural by any stretch of the word, so that kind of changes the equation for me. For my clients who took it, the two biggest things that they noticed were also better sleep, and a lot of them reported much more efficient fat loss when using the stack consistently. But these guys were on it for 16 to 24 weeks and really didn't realize those benefits until towards the end of their cycle. And again, I want to keep those expectations for you very realistic. These are very long-term tools. You're not going to take a shot tonight and wake up jacked the next day. Okay, now real quick, let's go over some of the common side effects and things to consider. The most common side effects are pretty mild. Redness or itching at the injection site, some flushing, maybe a headache, or a little bit of water retention. Some people also reported increased hunger, which is usually synonymous with increases in growth hormone, especially if your dosing isn't dialed in. But with ipamorelin, that's less of an issue compared to other peptides like sermorelin or tesamorelin. Keep in mind with this stuff, if you push the dose too high, you might notice numbness or tingling in your hands. You might experience carpal tunnel type symptoms or swelling from water retention in the joints or in the face. That's basically your body telling you that you've gone too far. 
So in the case of CJC and IPA Morellin, more isn't always better. But the most important thing that I do want to point out for this is if you have cancer or a history of cancer, you absolutely should not take these drugs. Growth hormone and IGF-1 can accelerate tumor growth, and that's pretty much a non-negotiable for you. One thing to also keep in mind is that these drugs haven't been tested for the long term, so the safety data on these for, let's say, a span of decades really isn't complete. We just don't have that research. It doesn't exist like we do with other medications. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're unsafe, but it does mean you have to stay cautious. Okay, so I'm sure at this point you're probably wondering how to actually get these drugs. Probably the more common option is through compound pharmacies or men's testosterone or hormone replacement clinics. I'm personally partnered with a company called Core Medical Group, and they provide all of my clients with the testosterone replacement therapy. And going this route is usually the cleanest and most supervised, safest way of going about it. You're getting that medical oversight from a professional. But it's going to come at a cost, and it's usually five to $600 per month, depending upon your dosage and how long you're on it for. The other option that a lot of people tend to go with is the research peptide companies. You'll see that the prices for those are close to $50 to $100 a month, sometimes a tenth of the cost of what you'd get them from the compound pharmacies or TRT clinics. There's a big difference. The trade-off is that the quality can vary. You're not 100% sure where you're getting that from. Some companies are great, others not so much. So if you do go that route, you need to make sure that you trust the source. But the way I explain it is this. Pharmacies are going to give you that peace of mind, but they're going to hit your wallet harder. Research suppliers are easier on the wallet, but they're going to require that you be more careful with who you trust. All right, so let's spend some time talking about dosing. When you hear about CJC and ipamorelin, the numbers are usually in micrograms, not milligrams. And just so you understand, there are a thousand micrograms inside of one milligram. Most people are running between two and 300 micrograms of each peptide per day, and they're going to inject that under the skin subcutaneously. The best setup to do this is to split it half in the morning, half in the evening before bed. Some people will scale it back to five nights per week just to save that money. But if you actually want the best results, daily dosing is usually recommended for these drugs. And so typically when you get these peptides, what's going to happen is you're going to get a vial with the peptide, which has the lipolyzed powder in it, and then you'll have the bacteriostatic water you're gonna actually have to mix those together. I have a completely separate video explaining how that works. If you need it, I'll drop it in the comments. But once you've reconstituted that, they need to be stored inside of the refrigerator. And a pretty common schedule for you once you've started is you'll go for three months and then take a month off just to give your system a break. All right, so this is my honest take on these. And this is the same exact advice I give all of my private coaching clients. CJC-1295 and ipamorelin, just like any other peptide or drug or supplement, are tools. They can absolutely help with sleep, recovery, fat loss, and muscle growth. But they're never going to replace being with your nutrition and exercising regularly. You're not going to find a drug out there, regardless of how much money you throw at the problem, that's going to be fitness in a bottle. You have to build the foundational habits and skills to be healthy, active, and in shape, making the right decisions for yourself before you add the drugs. Don't make the mistake of thinking that peptides are magic. The foundation is always going to be training, nutrition, and recovery. So to recap, CJC1295 raises your baseline growth hormone. Ipamorelin adds those pulses. And together, what they're doing is they're mimicking a more youthful hormonal rhythm. The benefits are real, but they're going to build slowly. This is something that you're going to take for six months before you can actually realize the result. And always keep in mind that these are always best used as support for the foundational habits, not as a crutch. Now, if you want help building the habits that make these results last while also staying up to date on peptide research, safety protocols, where people are finding safe sources, there's a link in the description to join my free school community. 
Inside, I share clear breakdowns of studies, practical nutrition and training strategies, and resources that make all of this very simple and sustainable for you. If you want a free invite, all you have to do is just tap the link in the description below, sign up for a free account, and I'll get you access. And one more thing, do me a favor and drop any questions you have in the comments below. And subscribe to the channel if you want more real-world insights on supplements, peptides, and proven methods to get lean and strong the right way. I hope this was valuable for you, and I'll see you next week for another Supplement Spotlight.